Palermo. Here. Festerson. Here. Harding. Here. Jerem. Here. Melton. Here. Pauls. Mr. President. Here. Would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for our invocation today by uh, Council Member Amy Melton. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, as we're on tax day today, and as I always say, there's nothing uh, sure in life other than death and taxes, and um, I think that's the realization that we have to have every year. Uh, but <laughs> what I would like to say, um, as difficult as today may be, I would like to think that the, the members of this council keep in mind every day um, that the taxpayer dollars um, that we are spending is your money. And we should, we should spend it wisely and appropriately to make this city um, an even better place than it is today. And I am I'm very proud of the work that we do here. And I want to thank you all for being good stewards of our taxpayer money. Thank you. Thank you. An affidavit of publication is on file for the pre-council and city council meeting. And a current copy of the Open Meeting Act is posted in a white binder on the east wall of the legislative chamber. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this meeting of the Omaha City Council. The council thanks you all for being with us today. And as a courtesy to those in attendance, we would ask you to turn off or mute any of your electronic devices. Madam Clerk. Item 6, an ordinance to approve a major amendment to the Mixed-Use District Development Agreement for All Holy Spirit Greek Orthodox Church, located at 215 South 181st Street, Planning Board and Planning Department, recommend approval. Public hearing on agenda item number 6 is today. Proponents, please. Nate Burnett, Reg Engineering, uh, 601 Old Cheney, Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, here today, uh, excited. Thank you, Council, for uh, hearing this request. Currently, there's a mixed-use uh, amendment on the site for three office buildings, and uh, we are proposing the major amendment to show a four-story hotel with 120 rooms, a uh, fifth story with eight to ten condos, and then on the south lot, the lot will be has been split into two. Uh, we're showing two office buildings in accordance with the 10 percent uh, office space requirement for the mixed-use district. Um, we've had multiple meetings with planning staff. They're supportive of it. Uh, past planning commission uh, 7-0. Uh, we're really excited about this uh, hotel and the condos that will be on the fifth floor. Um, I guess just one other thing of note is there will be separate parking for the uh, condo owners so they'll have their own access and there's sufficient parking for the hotel so with that I just uh, open up to any questions or comments thank you are there any other proponents who wish to be heard on item number six are there any opponents to be heard seeing none public hearing is closed is there um, uh, mr. Harding Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, you don't need to come back to the podium. I was just going to make a general comment. Um, I think uh, I want to thank uh, Avant for their investment in this area, um, growing area of our town. But uh, they've been very active in, in all areas of our town, both downtown and, and uh, midtown and, and now out west. So I wish them good luck on the project. I think it will be a good addition to the area. With that, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded to approve item six. Uh, there are no further lights. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item six is approved. Seven to zero. Item seven, an ordinance to rezone the property located at 2720 Keystone Drive from DR and R2 District, low density to GI District. Portions of the property are located within the floodway district. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing on agenda item number seven is today. Proponents, please. In favor? Proponent? Hello, my name is Todd Metzler with my wife, Chris Metzler. We're the owners of Maple 85. We're looking to expand our business from 21 years at our 85th and Maple location to one block west on 2720 Keystone Drive, which was a lime and Ritchie concrete plant that used to wash their trucks in. We we're turning into a landscape rock center to add to our business for boulders and flagstones and decorative. It is a green company. Uh, 
We're just looking to get it rezoned so we can expand our business. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Is that, and you're just going to answer any questions we might have? Yes, please. Okay. First are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? <coughs> Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public oh, hearing is. Oh, you got an opponent. Oh, I got an opponent? I'm not sure. Is this the what? No, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Okay. Are there any opponents who wish to be heard? I'm scared you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> didn't recognize my neighbor. Here we go. <laughs> They're lining up. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Uh, Mr. Festus. Thanks, Mr. President. I just wanted to say this is in my district, and I'm pleased to see um, your expansion. I know you've been, been there for a long time. I've been Thank a you. successful business and a good citizen. And I'm also a client. I'll be, be by soon to get some more mulch, I'm sure. Thank you. <laughs> we've been honored and lucky uh, with Omaha Magazine expanding their voting that we've just were awarded three years in a row best mulch provider, and we're looking to, with the rock side, to expand. We're definitely a family-owned business and just trying to grow. So Yeah, that's great. Thanks for what you're doing, and I'll motion to approve. Thank you. Yeah. Moved and seconded to approve. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's been moved and seconded to approve item seven. There are no further lights. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item seven is approved, seven to zero. Thank you. And before we move to the next item, I uh, wanted to recognize or Mr. Festerson, would you like to do that? I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and recognize. We have some young students here from the Young Southeast Asia Leadership Program who are here today. Uh, would you all please stand and be recognized? And thank you for coming. We always appreciate you all coming in. We appreciate you being involved, and, and we hope you learn some valuable information, and you'll share it when you get back. Thank you all for being here. Madam Clerk. Item 8, an ordinance to create Street Improvement District number 6884 in the City of Omaha for the purpose of improving Nicholas Street from North 87th Street West to its terminus and to fix and define the boundaries of said district. Public hearing agenda item number 8 is today. Proponents, please. Those who are in favor. <coughs> you can, if you're going to testify. Like yeah, if all of you are going to testify, you can come down. Or at least just tell us your name. <laughs> My name is Jennifer Napolitano, and I live at 8806 Nicholas Street, uh, which is on the corner of Nicholas and uh, 88th. Um, we are um, facing substantial costs to uh, improve our roads, and uh, just would like to uh, uh, say that that's something that we definitely want to do. We are residents there. Um, we take pride in our neighborhood. It's hard to do that um, when your curbs are crumbling and um, every time people come to visit they comment that they're going to get lost in the potholes and you know um, <clears throat> it, it is a, it's a frustrating situation to deal with. Um, so I am here to uh, support this movement and um, speak on behalf of the proponents. Thank you. So. Thank you. Any other proponents who wish to be heard? Thank you. Hi. My name is Joy Souter. I live at 1117 North 88th Street. I'm on uh, 88th Street is intersects with Nicholas Street. Um, when in 2014, our neighborhood, so residents on 88th Street and Nicholas Street, received notice from the city that our roads were substandard, that they had exceeded their useful life, and that if we didn't get them fixed, then the city would um, would mill the asphalt to make it into a granular surface. Um, we met with the city, with city, uh, with Public Works, sorry, a couple of times at the end of 2014, at the beginning of 2015, and unfortunately, it was just not in the budget of those of us who live on those streets to take on that task. Uh, we were thrilled that the city began to offer the cost share option and that really added some excitement and some fervor into residents on our two blocks to try to get these streets repaired. 
Um, Roy Sides, who's not able to be here today because he's suffering from some pretty severe health issues, he's an original owner of a house on, 80, on Nicholas Avenue. He actually um, lives on 8805 Nicholas Street, and I would speak on his behalf here as well today. He can't be here, but but Roy and I took up the charge. I worked on 88th Street, and and Roy was working on Nicholas Street. In the fall of last year, his health prevented him from continuing on working on this project and asked me to take it over. So even though I'm on 88th Street, I'm not on Nicholas Street, I'm here on behalf of, of Roy and, and others on Nicholas Street. Um, 88th Street is unique in that we could not get a majority of the frontage ownership because we have one property on the west side of the street, just south of Nicholas, that is the equivalent of four lots on the east side of the street. And so without that support, there was just no way that we would ever find a, a, a um, majority of the frontage ownership for 88th Street. So that's why we decided to proceed with just the majority of the frontage on Nicholas Street. We would love it if we could get 88th Street done as well. I met with Public Works to see if there were ways that we could also get 88th Street accomplished because it's just south of a main thoroughfare. Looking at the statutes and seeing how we could get that accomplished, we just can't. So um, we decided to proceed with just Nicholas Street at that time. We do have the majority of the frontage ownership for Nicholas Street that's been presented. Um, the residents there are all very excited about that. We have, um, it's a hardworking neighborhood and not any of us has a lot of money to spare. But truly the opportunity to have the 50% cost sharing is, has again sparked excitement that we can finally get our roads fixed. To be picked up by an Uber or to have friends come and pick us up and have to inch along our street is embarrassing. Um, it's something that is uh, that we would just really love to get fixed and we are grateful for the opportunity that the council will hear this request. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? My name is Justin <coughs> Brady. I'm actually a new homeowner on, on Nicholas Street at 8817. Um, I would also like to speak in favor of it. Um, I, I think that the cost sharing has definitely enabled this this to happen and that uh, I find that the, the pain that we may suffer now through the repairs will be will be gained later on the end when the cost is actualized. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Any other proponents who wish to be heard? Hi, I'm Christy Brow. I've lived on 8714 Nicholas Street for 26 years. Um, we just really need this street improvement in the past. I don't know, we used, used to re-asphalt it, but anyhow, in the past, I don't know, 10 years, my neighbor and I have been buying the pot repair at Menards, and he's been, I buy it, and he helps me fix the holes in front of my house. So, you know, I'm tired of doing this. I'd like to see a permanent, something permanent happen and really improve our street. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other proponents who wish to be heard? I'm Charles Ferguson, and I live at uh, 8721 Nicholas Street. And just like they said, our street is really bad. And like people come there wondering where we heck we live that live on such a terrible street. And I tell them, well, someday it's going to get fixed. So I'm just hoping we can get it fixed now. So thank you. Thank you. Any other proponents who wish to be heard on item number eight? Any any other proponents? Any opponents who wish to be heard? Hi, my name is Richard Reed. I live at 1491 113th Street in Laverne, Minnesota. Um, I'm the owner of 1105 North 88th Street uh, on the corner of 88th and Nicholas. Uh, my son was fortunate enough to be uh, accepted at the Creighton Medical School and we bought a blighted property that was in complete disrepair uh, on that corner and we spent a lot of time and money uh, rehabbing that house to where it's a nice small home now. Uh, at the end of his uh, stay at Creighton University, we intend to probably sell this property. And it, it pains me to come up and, and be an opponent of this because as my neighbors eloquently stated, that road is bad, all capital letters. It needs to be fixed. When I bought this property, at no time did I see anything that said 
that this road would not be taken care of by the city. I've been fortunate enough to live all over the country and I've never been in a situation where the city did not take care of the street. I assumed that it probably was on an agenda sometime to get repaired. I called, in fact, City Hall after we had begun rehab and uh, to, to touch base and make sure they knew that I wasn't happy with the street in front of my house. And was then informed that that was built not to code and the city had nothing to do with it and then found out they threatened to turn it into gravel and everything else. I understand now, after the fact, that uh, there's no function to tell a homeowner or a prospective homeowner that this is the case. It's up to the citizen to see that the road is bad, the curb is bad, and assume that it's a, a substandard road surface and isn't going to be taken care of. I don't think that's fair. I drove, uh, it's a 440 mile round trip today to tell you that this may pass the legal test. You, you may be well within your bounds and I'm not trying to suggest that you frivolously spend the citizens money, but this is something the city should take care of. The, uh, Joy very properly stated, this is a working class neighborhood. The, these are not rich people and neither am I. Um, we can't afford to pay for this and shouldn't have to. And I think that's about all I have to say. Thank you. It does need done, and I want to say that I'm probably not going to try to stand in the way any any further than voice in my opinion, but this is just wrong. It, it, like I said, it, it may pass the legal test, but I don't think it passes the smell test. Thank you. Thank you. Any other opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing another public hearing is closed, Mr. Festerson. Thanks, Mr. President. So this um, stretches in my district, um, and I think where we see the prevalence of unimproved roads, in my district at least, it's in the Florence area, and it's in the Keystone area, and it's in this Penny Park area that we're talking about here today. And I'm pleased to see so many neighbors come down and talk about it and express their opinions and, and to be engaged on it. Um, this was one of the original ground zeroes in the reclaimed street situation uh, many years ago, as some testifiers have explained, until really the city council got engaged and said, we don't think that's right either. Uh, so I agree with all the testimony today and also Richard's testimony that it's uh, a difficult situation and in many cases an unfair situation that the city should be taken care of, but hadn't over the, over the years of development and, and um, not having the requirements of um, developers to bring streets up to to code when they when they occurred but now we're a situation where we're trying to catch up to that and estimates are it's a 300 million dollar price tag to do all those streets throughout the city which is a very substantial hurdle which is where we are today in terms of talking about how can the city and the city council incent uh, or at least help neighbors fund these projects to ensure they do start to get done throughout the city um, and so we've seen several of them recently in the, in the last few years, whereby we've engaged the practice of cost sharing, which we had never done before, to help make that possible, even though I think it is a legitimate opinion that um, it'd be nice if the city could just do 100% of these streets and get them done. But I think, I think the reality of where we are today is this process that we have, whereby a neighborhood can uh, entertain the process that, you, that you've gone through to have petitions and indicate that you do want this to move forward and you do want the city's help in getting this done. So I might just engage Joy here for a minute if she wouldn't mind coming back up. Um, I had originally started talking with Roy about this project too and I hope he's doing well and maybe even watching today. Uh, but then um, had started working with Joy um, on this as well as they made that transition. And so Joy, if you would, um, I think we have 16 properties within this boundary, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Give you a chance to count. <laughs> yes, there are 16 properties along Nicholas. 16 properties along Nicholas Avenue on the street that we're talking about. Yes. And the majority. Uh, how, how many signed the petition or wanted this to happen? The. Um, I'm sorry. Before you go ahead, can name an address for the record again, sure. please. Joy Suter, 1117 North 88th Street. Ten property owners signed petitions. Um, so ten of the sixteen owners signed a petition. Um, 
the total square footage, and I confirmed all of these numbers with Public Works, so I'm not speaking out of turn. The total square uh, front footage, sorry, the total front footage that's represented by these 16 properties is 1,220.38. 51% uh -huh. of that total would be 622.39. The 10 property owners that signed petitions represent 794.61. So it's a majority of the, both in number of homeowners, but also in ownership of the front footage. Uh, Mr. Gravy, who just testified in support, he's a new homeowner since we signed our petitions uh, last summer. And so he would be an 11th okay. property owner that's in support. So it's a strong indication of support to me that um, the strong majority of neighbors do want this to happen. And I'm glad you addressed 88th Street too, because that is a, uh, I noticed that too when I was driving this um, and confirmed that it is in very bad condition and needing help that um, when we do complete this phase of it, it would also be nice to actually do 88th, which goes to Western, but I understand the situation you're facing there with one really large lot there that may not want that to occur, and, and so it does at this point take some consensus amongst neighbors to do these things. But that's why we're talking about Nicholas Street today. I think that is a good first step forward. Yeah. And as we talked um, over the last several weeks or months even, uh, I do support the city's 50% cost share. And presuming this gets approved today and created today as a district, next week we'll have a resolution on our agenda that will formally approve the city's 50% cost share into that, which um, I have requested and will support and I hope my colleagues do too. We appreciate that, thank you. You bet. Thanks. With that, I would uh, motion approval. We have no, uh, moved and seconded to approve uh, item number, uh, uh, yeah, um, I'm sorry. Ms. Melton? Thank you. Thanks, Councilman Chair. Hey, uh, Ms. Cedar. First of all, this is just an, another example of something that you do for the community because it just seems like every time I run into you, you are doing something else as a volunteer that's making our community better. So I just want to thank you for continuing to keep on with this even though you can't get your own street done right. for your neighbor um, Thank you. and and then I just wanted to say we we had had some some kind of issues before where the neighbors on the street um, had agreed to it but were agreeing to something different than what they thought because you know their their neighborhood leader maybe was it clear or for whatever reason it was? So I just want to be clear that all the residents know you were talking about frontage. So is everybody going to, uh, have they agreed to split the cost by frontage or by not, by property equalizing the, each owner? The, what has been communicated to the property owners is that their responsibility, their portion of the 50% would be based on their front footage ownership. Okay. So not the number of, properties but by the square foot I keep saying square footage but by the front footage of the property frontage okay correct and then that and that's what's been presented to everybody and I think we'll we'll be moving forward and that's that's where we want we don't want to be having these arguments at the board of equalization when somebody says well I'm paying more than my neighbor and we said well <laughs> in the beginning that this is this is how the neighbors agreed to do it right and I and I would um, just to buttress that I'll, I'll let you know that the corner lots understand that because of the the how their lots are bigger that they would be um, assessed a, a larger amount and that is of concern for some of our larger um, wider property owners the um, for example miss napolitano who just testified she's on a corner lot um, of 88th street and nicholas and she signed two petitions one representing her interest and support in having 88th Street completed and one for Nicholas Street. So I believe I can assure you that it's been communicated that each side of a house um, would be, would require separate approval in order to show that we understand that that square footage would have an, or the front, the frontage would have an impact on the cost associated by property. Okay, and I, I fully support this and and I would agree, and I and I understand that Councilman uh, Fesserson has a number of these roads. Um, the City Council wishes that there was more we could do, but I think prior, you know, to a couple of years ago, people were having to pay. I think when you started it, it was a hundred percent 
Um, so at least now we are cost sharing in this, um, and, and I know that'll be on the agenda next week. So I, I'm glad that we're able to at least assist in this effort and we're able to work together. And again, thank you for all your work and all the neighbors that came down here with you. I want to thank all of you for getting together and um, helping make your neighborhood better, which again, leads to a better city. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Mill. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Palermo. Councilmember Melton for clearing up half of the questions I had of previous discussions. Um, I didn't catch, ma'am, how long have you lived in this area I or along that stretch? 13 years. 13 since years. Since 2005. So, you, just so I can uh, wrap my head around this, so 2014 this process started. Yes. So, let's say from 2014 back, what was the conditions of the roads then and how did you deal with them? My understanding from Mr. Sides, from Roy Sides, who's not able to be here, um, Roy is an original homeowner on Nicholas Street and Roy actually used to work for the city and so Roy has had a lot of keen insight based on his um, history in, in public works but my understanding is what the commute, what the two streets used to do would every five years or so um, uh, Roy would get a bid for to chip seal, I believe is the terminology, to chip seal the asphalt, and um, that would be shared amongst the homeowners. And we moved into the house in 2005, and I believe the first time Roy tried to do this uh, was in 2007, since we had lived there. And it was clear that the street was deteriorating. Similar to Mr. Reed, I was horrified at the prospect that I had to pay to fix my road. And as a new homeowner, I thought, well, what in the world does this mean? It's a road, it'll be fine. Subsequently, I've learned that asphalt is not as sturdy as concrete and cement, and that it is necessary to do the chip seal. We've had some turnover in home ownership on 88th Street. So as we've had new homeowners join the block, trying to explain to them about the chip seal, they had the same reaction that I did and they weren't interested. And so um, I think, and, and really Charlie Ferguson could tell you the timeline more, Mr. Ferguson who testified because he also is a longtime homeowner on Nicholas Street, um, as is as Ms. Brow, but they, I think every five years or so, Roy would head up this committee to get for the homeowners to pay for the road to get the chip seal done so that the asphalt would last longer. That has not happened in the 13 years that I've lived in my house. And um, in 2014, when the city presented that they would turn it to gravel, we knew that that was not a good idea because we also are at the top of a hill. And so the idea of gravel being washed away down into the sewer drains didn't seem like a good idea. We also thought that the asphalt that we did have would be better than gravel, um, easier to plow, easier to have our kids ride bikes on the street. Um, so that's the history as I know it in the 13 years that I've lived there. Okay, thank you. That's thank a great you. timeline. Thank Thanks. you. Uh, Mr. Festerson. Thanks, and since we're kind of talking about um, street maintenance, uh, the other thing I wanted to point out in, in this conversation that is significant about what you're doing here today is that you won't have to chip seal anymore. Right. Um, should this be approved and cost shared and constructed, uh, because it is a street improvement district, which means cement, uh, this will then in perpetuity become the city's responsibility to maintain uh, going forward. So that's a huge benefit of what you're undertaking here today too. Right. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. There are no more lights. It's been moved and seconded to approve item eight. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Mr. President. Yes. Item eight is approved seven to zero. Item 9, an application to consider a Class D liquor license for Bucks, Inc., doing business as Bucky's, number 24, located at 2223 South 24th Street. Public hearing agenda item number 9 is today. Proponents, please. Hi there, I'm Robert Deesing. I reside at 1005 East Aberdeen Drive, Pavilion, Nebraska. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish, are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Uh, Mr. Jerome. Yes, thank you, Mr. Deasing. I just want to uh, let you know that Mr. Palermo 
Palermo and I went down to the store over the lunch hour and because it's on our shared boundary of our districts and um, as so we were there it's a very small store um, not really in a neighborhood district during the time we were there there was not one walk-in customer they were all drive up getting fuel and coming in the store so the concerns that sometimes arise on um, what is truly a neighborhood convenience store with single sales of the distilled spirits and the 50 milliliter um, bottles I don't think will be a concern uh, but you are close to two parks one to the north and one to the east and uh, would urge you to um, uh, keep an eye out for litter in the neighborhood because those would be the type of container that we sometimes see happen um, and on your whole property we only found one can it was an energy drink that someone he had dropped and it blew out into Martha and before we could pick it up a car crushed it so <laughs> Mr. Palermo since he was in the, the shotgun seat didn't think he wanted to go out in the traffic and pick up the trash <laughs> okay. but otherwise that very clean well-maintained property so I spoke with Mr. Buchanan too who called and uh, told him that I would be supportive because of what we observed and the type of location what a store is so I would make a motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Uh, no further lights. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Hardy. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Milton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 9 is approved 7 to 0. Item 10, an application to appoint Jack R. Barda as manager of Jays on Jackson LLC, doing business as Jays on Jackson to their Class C liquor license located at 1101 Jackson Street. Public hearing agenda item number 10 is today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon. I'm Judith Jackson. I am at 18432, excuse me, Fawn Circle Drive, Fremont, Nebraska. I'm here representing Jack Barda. Um, Thank you. Just here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Moved, it's moved and seconded. Well, he moved it. You want to second it? Moved, <laughs> moved and second to approve item 10. There are no further lights. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 10 is approved 7 to 0. Thank you. Item 11, an application to appoint Brian T. Wall as manager of Old Market Seafood, LLC, doing business as Plank Seafood Provisions to their Class I liquor license located at 1205 Howard Street. Public hearing agenda item number 11 is today. Proponents, please. Hi. Um, I'm Brian Thomas Wall. Um, I'm the general manager at Plank Seafood. I'm just uh, requesting that I am added to the Class I liquor license at the location, please. Sure. Address, please. Um, my address is, uh, my home address is um, 11405 South 43rd Street, Bellevue, Nebraska. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Second. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. yes. Harding. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 11 is approved 7 to 0. Item 12, an application to appoint Chad H. Gumbert as manager of Upstream Brewing Company, LLC, doing business as Upstream Brewing Company to their Class IL liquor license located at 514 South 11th Street. Public hearing agenda item number 12 is today. Proponents, please. Uh, Chad Gumbert, 5208 South 80th Street, Ralston, Nebraska. Thank you. And you're just here to answer any questions we yes, might sir. have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Moved, to Moved and seconded to approve item 12. No lights. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 12 is approved 7 to 0. Consent agenda. Any member of the city council may cause any item placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed from the consent agenda shall be taken up by the city council immediately following the consent agenda and the order in which they were removed unless otherwise provided by the city council rules of order. The public hearings on agenda items numbers 13 and 14 were held on April 10th, 2018. Second. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. 
Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Items 13 and 14 are approved 7 to 0. The public hearings on agenda items numbers 15 through 32 are today. <clears throat> if you wish to address the City Council regarding these items, please come to the microphone, indicate the agenda item number you wish to address, identify yourself by your name, address, who you represent, and if you are a proponent or an opponent. Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Mr. Harding. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to make a couple of quick comments on two items. Number 19, um, and along with that 22, which are resolutions um, related to the widening of the 168th, basically between um, Pacific Street and Q Street. And I'm glad to see that project moving forward. It looks like we're going to start in 2020. And then the last item is number 30, which is uh, the reappointment of Carl Anderson to the um, Elkhorn, Old, Elkhorn, Old Town Elkhorn Business Improvement District. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the public hearing is closed. Um, is there a motion? Second. Moved and seconded to approve um, items 15 through 32. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Jerem? Yes. Melton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Items 15 through 32 are approved 7 to 0. <laughs> Item 33, a resolution to approve the landmark building tax increment financing redevelopment project plan for a redevelopment site located northeast of 13th and Harney Streets in the amount of $9,824,122. Public hearing agenda item number 33 is today. Proponents, please. So before you is the landmark building TIF redevelopment project plan, uh, which proposes to convert four office floors of the landmark building into 128 rooms of an upper upscale boutique hotel. What I'm trying to demonstrate, hopefully you can see it, um, the property is outlined in blue. So this is the office building and then connected to it is the parking garage. So this. This represents the TIF. The actual rehab and conversion will actually only take place on the, the site of the office building. 15-story <clears throat> office building, Class A. has had some vacancy since uh, PAC Life left around December 15, uh, 2015. Um, and uh, Jason and his group have been working on trying to figure out how to reactivate this building. So this hotel opportunity uh, gives the downtown area and the old market another chance to live again with more vitality um, and it also helps to take this class A office space and bring it back to life. Um, there will be four different floors and not to take too much of his thunder I think he has a presentation he wants to go through a lot of those slides are in your application packet the amount of the TIF is just over 9.8 million it's a 62 million dollar investment um, they had about uh, 42 million in TIF eligible costs, but really wanted to focus on the TIF eligible expenses that, that pertain to the actual conversion and rehab within the office space. Um, there will be an addition of a uh, restaurant that will be added to the second floor there on the south side, and then there's um, some addition to the north side of the building that they're they're doing to the building. So. Lots of rehab and some additions to the actual footprint of the building. Some really exciting things that will help activate, again, that space and will be a plus to the downtown area. Uh, has approved, been approved by the TIF committee. It does meet the community development law and our TIF guidelines. Um, and with that, I will step aside. I'll ask for your approval and then step aside and let the developer speak more. Thank you. Is there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Good afternoon. Jason Fisher, 17534 Baywood Circle, Omaha, Nebraska, the developer here. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll, I'll breeze through this. I get excited about the project and, and talking about it. So um, are you, am, I, am I cueing this? OK. Oh, perfect. OK. There we go. For um, 
clarification, the uh, office tower is the 15-story um, building on the right. CenturyLink owns the data center, the five-story data center on the left still. And I would add they've been a real uh, proponent and um, help on this uh, project, real very supportive. So uh, delivered in 1991, still um, has a relevant aesthetic. Um, we're uh, proud of that, all glass curtain, curtain wall facade. As Bridget mentioned, the challenge, there's a couple challenges that, we're, that I'll talk about today that, we're, that we are addressing, uh, one of which is a vacancy issue. Uh, it's been 50 percent, right around 50 percent vacant since December of 2015. And um, with, with the available space on, in the old market currently um, and additions of you know, some, some additional office square footage available, we felt like um, uh, leasing up the building um, as pr primarily office was going to be a challenge. In addition, it's got it's under parked for uh, for an office user. So, and and subsequently, we're sitting here with a declining tax value and and um, market value as well. So, we evaluated many um, many uh, changes in use. We settled on, and it's not settling. We, we actually ended up on an upper upscale hotel conversion for six floors. Four of those would be rooms, as Bridget mentioned, and then there's two uh, hotel amenity uh, lobby and amenity spaces. So, um, and this this felt uh, really good, uh, especially in visiting with the Omaha Convention Visitors Bureau, and understanding that that um, that experts believe we're still underserved in the upper upscale hotel arena. arena. So. Um, we've been diligently working on that. The end result for the for the property is that it will be almost fully occupied uh, and fully activated, uh, which is great. So we think the uh, occupancy rate will be in the 90 to 93 percent by the time we open the hotel. Apologize for the size of this. The important thing that I wanted to mention for this group, in case you missed it in the TIP application, to the right is Jean Leahy Mall, if you will. The hotel lobby and entrance is actually going to be on the north side. We feel like that's really, really important to activate Farnham Street. And um, as Bridget also mentioned, there will be um, an addition in, in, in the form of an entrance and some sort of portico, so it'll have a really nice arrival presence. And um, our front yard will be uh, Jean Leahy Mall. On the south side, which I'll talk about in a second, we're, we, the plan is we are going to build a two-story addition. And um, that's important for many, many reasons. But the, our signature restaurant will be out there sort of engaging the old market, uh, which is a major entertainment, food and beverage uh, destination, as you all know. That's the first floor, you know, traditional uh, upper upscale lobby that hopefully will be um, a place that's very active for breakfast, a place to work during the day and um, have lunch and then even dinner. Um, there's some mood images that give you a sense for the quality of design um, that we're after. On the second floor, amenity spaces continue for the hotel. On the north side or the right side will be a, 200, a roughly 200 person meeting space. And then individual medium sized boardroom spaces and corporate training facilities, as well as a fitness facility that will service the hotel and the office occupants. And then that addition on the left side, which is the south side, um, the plan is uh, for a rooftop bar uh, that will have um, light, you know, small plate um, food options as well. Mood images for the signature restaurant, for the hotel amenity spaces, and for the rooftop bar to give you a sense of the design. We learned that the building is, is very well um, structured and designed for hotel rooms. It has zero columns from the from the core of the building to the um, curtain wall to the exterior, and the mullion spacing in the in the in the uh, windows is is perfect for for kind of traditional sizing of hotel rooms. So we think this is going to be really special, um, unobstructed views in all directions and floor to ceiling glass uh, in the rooms. And because of the size of the building, these the rooms will be you know 20 to 30 percent larger than than, um, than most king-size standard hotel rooms. So we're excited about that. Here's some precedent <laughs> images for the hotel room design, uh, hotel rooms, and a summary of the hotel. So 
upper upscale hotel in addition there were the remaining floors that's six six floors nine stories will will maintain office we are enhancing the office component of this property too and Bridget we didn't we didn't talk about this or included in tip eligible expenses but we are going to spend a little money on the parking garage and uh, try to try to give that a better aesthetic and and tie that into the old market a little bit better one of the challenges that was created it's a wonderful development but one of the challenges that was created is it, you know it's, it's it's built over two square blocks in downtown and really served as a little bit of a barrier for north south connectivity from for the old market so a stated objective of our team is to help and enhance those connections again um, and i'll point out on the right hand side there's a there's a 6,000 square foot retail parcel that we own that isn't part of this application, uh, but I do want the council to know that we have plans on that, and I'll, I'll show a picture of that because that's a that's a pretty um, inactive corner that we'd like to solve. This is 13th and Harney. This is the southwest corner of the building, and the building sits back. And although that's a wonderful thing because it even creates the opportunity for a courtyard, the reality is in the old market because the rest of the properties um, sit out the property line, it creates sort of an inactive corner. So our uh, team felt it was important to add that addition to bring that to bring some action to the to the property line on the Harney Street side. This is that retail bay on 11th Street. So this is the southwest corner of 11th and Fordham. And just just for point of reference, it's, it's a part of our overall goal and objective to really help 11th Street be a north south connector and then I'll touch on the pro the project that we're talking about uh, the landmark center this is the addition this is the rendering of the two-story addition it's actually vaulted two stories so it'll it'll effectively look like three stories um, with the signature restaurant on the main level and a rooftop bar um, slash food and beverage component on, on the second and this is the courtyard right next to that there's actually public access north south through the through what we call the link the lobby of the office building and i just reference it because we've spent a lot of time um, programming those plaza areas um, working with um, bridget and city planning to make sure that we enhance the public um, the public interface with this project and hope that's that's really where we we think we can enhance that north south connectivity a couple of there's public improvements that, that are go along with this with 13th Street uh, down Farnham etc and and we really want to take some uh, pride in the in the plaza spaces and um, what we're calling an activated old market plaza as I stated before I think it's important just just to let you know that in addition to the connection uh, between the old market Jean Leahy that's a state of the goal but you know, we really want this to be uh, as exciting, exciting and stimulating a place as um, it's located in, which is Omaha on the Old Market, and, and so if there's any questions, I'm here to answer those. Okay, thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Virginia. Seeing none of their yes. Sorry, Virginia Hill City Planning. I just wanted to make mention that <clears throat> we did ask for a three percent TIF contribution from this project, and I just wanted to make. Note that um, we are getting that, and that's um, really great. It's about three hundred thousand of the TIF allocation of, of the total TIF, which is nine point eight million, a little over nine point eight million. Of that three hundred thousand, a hundred thousand is going toward our downtown public improvement fund, and we've just been um, adding money to that fund so that we can do more improvement, public improvements and enhancements in the downtown area. And then about two hundred thousand of those. Uh, of that contribution will be used for public improvements as Jason pointed out um, adjacent to and surrounding the project site so just wanted to make mention of that thank you are there any uh, opponents who wish to be heard <coughs> Luis Jimenez 518 North 40th Street uh, I've been listening been looking at this uh, for the last couple weeks and I really don't see why the city needs to forego nine million eight hundred twenty four thousand dollars on this uh, especially on something as to do with hotel rooms i've heard this uh, city council speak on the fact that the city's struggling to fill hotel rooms um, in, in other venues and 
Yeah, you know, but he. Uh, I heard the developers say that uh, they're going to have a 90% uh, fill. They're going to fill their rooms. Well, I, I think that uh, if this, this is such a great thing, uh, they should pay the nine million eight hundred and twenty-four thousand in taxes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Are there any other opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Mr. Festerson. Thanks, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Fisher, if you would. I just wanted to first thank you for um, this reinvestment, a major reinvestment back into our downtown and, to, and into a property, as you noted, that um, has been underutilized for a, a period of years. Uh, so to have this reinvestment happen there and have this plan um, occur is really great. And to have the presentation you had today, too, which is very thorough, is much more than we typically, typically get on some of these presentations or our agenda items. So I appreciated that, too. And I think it was evident in your presentation there how much thought you've given to the project and its connectivity to the mall and to the old market and its surrounding neighbors there. And during my career, I've had um, office space both across the street and also to just across the street to the west. And so I'm very familiar with this block, and I like what you've conceived here and what you intend to do. Mm -hmm. um, did you have an opportunity to suggest or respond to the notion of why TIF is necessary for the project? Well, um, yeah, no, I appreciate you know uh, all viewpoints and uh, protecting the taxpayers' dollars. So appreciate that, that viewpoint. Um, this is clearly a but for um, project. Um, in addition to TIF, where we are pursuing and have commitments for some new market tax credit uh, dollars as well. But um, to convert a a project like this, this magnitude, um, doesn't happen without without um, some in incentives like tax increment financing. So, we've done. You know, obviously the TIF submittal had the had the but for analysis, and um, it is clearly necessary for the project to go. Thanks. And for those that are familiar with that terminology, the, the but for terminology means it would not occur but for the incentive of having TIF to to make this possible. Do you want to address yeah, that can I tag you with Jason sure. for a second? Sorry, John Blumenthal, uh, 1500, uh, 1700 Farm Street, Omaha 68102. I'm the attorney uh, representing the developer, and I, I did just want to take a moment just to respond, and I, I appreciate that viewpoint, um, but would point out that in addition to um, the but for analysis, this is unlike other projects in that you do have a declining tax base on this building. Um, this truly is on the but for analysis. This is a, a once in a lifetime, in my mind. Uh, opportunity to increase the tax base greatly with this building and this is a, a unique opportunity to do that. I also wanted just to point out to the council um, that in addition uh, to uh, what we've talked about activating this area that there will be uh, as you've seen in the application um, city sales tax and hotel lodging taxes uh, in excess of um, four hundred thousand dollars generated a year on this project um, also, 350 uh, construction jobs will be created by this project. So, um, um, we're, we're certainly sensitive to taxpayers uh, and feel like this is an opportunity to give back to the tax base and create jobs while we're doing so. Thank you. I would add that the um, projections are for 150 plus full time uh, positions added as a result of the hotel. And although some of those um, are heavy on tips. Um, the vast majority of those are certainly above the underemployed line that we all kind of look at in this market. We're working with uh, Metro Community College uh, on some potential tracks um, that would include um, food service management, et cetera. And so we're, we're really, I would say that I think there was a supplement in the TIF application. I'm not sure about our community. We did a community impact, we did a self community impact story study. Uh, and really wanted to make sure that we stated that this was beyond just a real estate development. And so I'm proud of that too. And it's been reported, or at least, uh, I don't know if it's been announced, but it's been reported that uh, a major tenant will be Mutual of Omaha Bank. Is that correct? Top, That's correct. Top floors, I presume? Yeah. Uh, the half of the 15th floor, which is the top floor, the other is occupied by a law firm, Stinson, and, um, and the 14th floor. So I think it's a great opportunity in that respect to, will there be signage associated with that on the building? We're working on that right now. Um, yes, and um, you know, the hotel entrance on the north side, we want to really give that a great presence. 
but we also have to make sure that the office component, which is significant, uh, gets its fair um, uh, appearance, if you will. And so, so we're working on that link will likely be dressed up and, uh, and be obvious that it's the office entrance to the building. So there'll be signage in there, there'll be wayfinding with regard to the courtyard, and there, there, there's going to be building signage as well. Well, I'm pleased to support this today, and um, on a personal note, too, it's nice to see you back in Omaha. We had the opportunity to see each other out of town at a teenage volleyball tournament, so I'm glad you survived the three days as well. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. Jerem. Yeah, I'm glad there's so much excitement about what's going on in downtown today that, you know, everyone's basically cheerleading here. Um, but whenever you have a, a a space as prominent as this space is in the downtown at 50 percent occupancy with declining um, tax valuation because of that occupancy which is driven by the the value of your your leases um, that's something to be concerned about but downtown is in need of a boost it's need it's in need of a shot in the arm and we're here today to to take the, some steps to get that shot in the arm going again and there's some of your neighbors and downtown enthusiasts that are behind you here today that are that are really rooting for your success and the success of not only the space but the occupants who are who are filling the spaces so um, we welcome you to downtown and I'm pleased mm -hmm. to support this and glad that it'll you'll be back up at 90 95 percent occupancy soon so Appreciate congratulations that. to you and welcome to downtown thank you you, Mr. Harding. Mr. President, I need to learn to hit my button a little sooner so I don't sound like I'm repeating everything that's been said previously, <laughs> but I, I will touch on a few things. And I, one of the things that I, I think we're at least alluded to, but uh, really with, with some of the plans uh, that are anticipated to potentially be happening in the downtown area, both for the riverfront and Gene Leahy Mall, which you will be fronting, as you uh, mentioned. I can't think of any other word of, than excitement for for this project, and and uh, having also having a, a major tenant that was uh, discussed here with uh, Mutual of Omaha Bank coming down. They had a, a number of options where they could have located to, and and uh, coming downtown is is a really good sign, I think, and um, we're glad to have them in the downtown area because. Not only are there a lot of things happening today, but there are a lot of things on the on the board being planned, and I think this will be a great part of it. I'll just make a quick mention on the TIF. The TIF is about 16 percent, at least by my calculation, which is very much in line with with uh, with this kind of a project, and and I think it will be well served and, and is well deserved for this project. So thanks for your investment. Thank you. Moved and seconded to approve. There are no further lights. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson? Yes. Harding? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Melton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Item 33 is approved, 7 to 0. Thank you. Item 34, a resolution that the City Council supports approval of each of the general obligation bond ballot questions and urges their approval by Omaha's voters on May 15, 2018. Public hearing agenda item number 34 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Mr. Harding. Thank you, Mr. President. I uh, asked for this resolution to appear on our agenda so that we could take um, a position, if we so desired to do so, um, in support of uh, the, um, the five issue, bond issues that will be on the ballot. And knowing that um, voting is already occurring because of the early vote uh, starting last, uh, last week, I thought it was important to get out in front of it as, as much as we could to take a position on that. So the, these five issues are very important for, uh, for the continued development and, uh, and uh, financial management uh, of our city. Uh, it, won't, uh, it will not create a tax increase um, by the passage of these, which I think is important to note because there will be, at least for some citizens in some areas, they will have uh, an additional bond item uh, related to a school that will cause a, a tax increase. So I wanted to make sure that uh, we understood what the differences were, that it was not going to be a tax increase to the citizens of Omaha. 
Uh, I know there are a number of uh, organizations that have also publicly stated their position, including the Chamber of Commerce, Nebraska Taxpayers for Freedom, and, and many others in, in support of this. So um, I was um, glad to, to move this, uh, this action forward, and, and I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Moved and seconded to approve. Uh, Ms. Melton. Thank you. And, and thank you, uh, Councilman Harding, for putting this on our uh, on our agenda today so that um, our voice could be heard um, as a resolution. But I, a number of people, even on next door, and um, I've attended some meetings where people felt like they did they truly didn't feel like they knew where the money was going. Um, and so just for purposes of, of transparency and information to the public, uh, Mr. Curtis, I'm, I'm going to ask just so that I don't get all the numbers wrong. Um, I wanted you to, our numbers guy, to give the, the figures, the amount of the bond, and then if you could break it down into the public works, some examples of the roads that, that would be covered, parks, et cetera. If, that, I think that would be really important for the people. Um, and then I, I wanted to talk about where they could go um, to find our capital improvement projects online. But obviously, they could contact any one of us here on the council, but I, I would appreciate it if you would give us that information. Sure. Finance. Uh, I will remind everybody that the city employees are neutral as required, so I'll just simply give you information about it. This will be on the May 15th ballot, and this is an authorization for general obligation bonds. You'll often hear them called GO bonds. <clears throat> as the council members have stated, there will be no tax increase because the city for years now has worked within its stated debt service levy so that we retire bonds, bring new issuances on, and stay within our levy and our debt service. Um, it covers a period of primarily 2019 to 2023, not exclusively because we sort of work within our authorization to get the projects done, and those do change somewhat over time. And as the council members have stated, this is in the CIP, and you can find it both on the planning website and on the finance website if you want, if any citizen wants great, great detail. Um, the bond issuance of the authorization for all five categories is approximately 227 million. And the first of the five categories is transportation bonds. And within that, a couple projects of note are 26th and Q Street Bridge Replacement, 72nd and Maple Intersection Improvements, 156th Street from Pepperwood to Corby, 168th Street from West Center to Q, and some intersection improvements at 132nd at Center. So that's the first category, transportation bonds. The second category is environmental bonds. Uh, and first, on transportation bonds, one thing I neglected to say, that is the, pri uh, the majority of the bond issuance, and that is $151 million approximately. Uh, the, sex group, the next grouping is the environmental bonds at about $11.5 million, and in there is the Thomas Creek steam, uh, Stream Bank Stabilization, Colt Creek Culvert Replacement, and Missouri Ribby Levy Certification Project. Uh, and that'll be phase one for those of you who know what those are, good for you. Um, <laughs> the next section is the Parks and Recreation Bonds, 15.5 million. And in there is Adams Park, and these, this is not an exhaustive list. These are just some examples of what's in all of these categories. Uh, Adams Park Playground and Picnic Areas, Mandan Park Renovations, and Lawrence Youngman the Lake Park Trail. Again, there's a much more exhaustive list on uh, those websites we mentioned earlier and in the CIP. The fourth grouping at 9.8 million are public safety bonds. Those primarily pay for large fire equipment, including medic units, pumpers, and aerial ladders. Uh, the final grouping is public facilities bonds at 39.4 million. And in there, uh, items are fifth precinct, the one that's going into Elkhorn, the fire station um, number 31 in South Omaha, and some other public facility renovations and repairs. And again, there are many, many projects in there, and feel free to go to the CIP if you'd like to see the details. Thank you very much. And again, that CIP, it's our capital improvement projects, and, and we put those out in, in five, basically five-year, five to six-year plans. We add a year e each year. And I think the websites we were talking about is you can go to the city of Omaha and you can click on either planning or finance to find those. And I really do want to um, uh, thank the city over the last year. This The, the last uh, capital improvement project book that came out actually 
has pictures, it's a lot easier to read. You can actually tell what projects um, we're talking about much, much better than uh, the capital improvement book that I had to I had to sit down and spend an hour and have somebody teach me how to read when I first became a council member. So I really appreciate the improvements in the capital improvement uh, project plan book that has been put out and that is now online. So um, thank you for giving us the details on exactly uh, where the, the money is going and giving us some examples uh, of where some of those projects are going. I think we just had on here that 168th Street from uh, Pacific to Q and Councilman Harding and um, and into Councilman Paul's district, which we talked about earlier on this agenda. And so um, I, I think that, that where the money is going is very transparent and that it's very important um, that this that, that these bonds do get passed. Um, and so thank you, and I support the resolution. Thank you. Mr. Palermo. Thank you, President Gray. Uh, Vinnie Palermo, 4520 South. I, I guess you don't need that. I was just going to say I, I am a proponent. When you called, I would have went over there and said that. But uh, So thank you to Councilman Harding for bringing this forward. I am definitely in support of each of these GO bonds. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pauls. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gray. Mr. Curtis, uh, I just need to, you to explain to me a little bit more in depth. Okay, you say well, there's a police station fire station we're going to be doing roads <clears throat> is that not true uh steve curtis uh city finance i maybe didn't quite catch your whole question well you said you indicated that there are certain projects that are going to be hopefully do, to be accomplished like uh, a new police station fire station uh roads streets that's correct okay uh see i think we need to go a step further who, where does most of that money stay? I mean, okay, the fire station or the uh, police station or the roads, I mean, does that money leave the city of Omaha? Uh, I guess technically no, it stays here in the community. So, so I think sometimes we are under the assumption that we're collecting all these taxes and they're going someplace. Well, most of these taxes are reinvested into the city. Uh, a number of our, um, I just encourage people, once you see some of these uh, things that we're passing, see who are the benefit beneficiaries of this. A lot of these are local businesses. And uh, so I think sometimes we need to take it a step further. It is not only that we're getting these things, but it's actually being plowed back into the community. There are jobs, that people who live here. And uh, uh, it's not uh, money that's actually, for the most part, leaving the city of Omaha. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Festus. Thanks, Mr. President. I just wanted to add to you for perspective, uh, and because I want people to know, that um, we've talked a lot about roads and our roads needs um, today and in previous weeks, and I'm sure that will continue because those needs are tremendous. So I want folks to realize that uh, more than half of this bond issue for the city on the ballot will be attributed to transportation, which means roads. $151 million worth of the $227 million overall issue. And that's not by um, happenstance. The City Council and the Mayor have worked um, intentionally to increase that amount over the years and as other debt has been retired. So we are concentrating more of this uh, ability into our streets as part of the solution to our long-term challenges there. And as context, uh, if you go back to 2010, uh, the transportation element of that bond issue was $44 million. In 2014, it was $47 million, and now it's $151 million. So I want people to know uh, the importance of that to our road system as well uh, when they vote in May. Thank you. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve item 34. There are no more lights. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 34 is approved 7 to 0. Item 35, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of a purchase order to Camira Water Solutions, Inc. in the amount of $420,000 for the purchase of ferric chloride to be utilized at the water resource recovery facilities to be effective for a period of 12 months and is extendable for two one-year periods with approval of both parties. Public hearing agenda item number 35 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. 
Item 36, an ordinance approving an agreement with Don Aarons of Cass County, Nebraska for the land application of stabilized sewage sludge for an agreement period ending December 31st, 2018 with up to four automatic one-year renewals. Public hearing on agenda item number 36 is today. Proponents, please. North 40th Street. Uh, I just want to uh, comment on uh, an idea that was put forth during pre pre meeting um, of getting this slush, sludge, and compost uh, put put together, save some money. I would offer that perhaps if the city decided to go with bioplastics on the plastic bags, uh, which are made. Uh, by vegetable oil and um, other things of that nature, uh, you could put those with the compost and the sludge, and uh, you know be friendly to the environment uh, and resolve the t uh, bags issue um, because the bags, single-use bags, right now are uh, petroleum-made, and those take a thousand years to. Uh, break down. If you go with bioplastics, uh, they break down in a much shorter amount of time, but they go through the process of breaking down and then they release uh, uh, methane and other uh, greenhouse gases. So if you put these uh, bioplastic bags with the compost and the slush, um, I think it's also, or it gets uh, three birds with one stone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other proponents or opponents that wish to be heard? Seeing that public hearing is closed, next item. Item 37, an ordinate, ordinance vacating a portion of Lewis Drive commencing approximately 78 feet east of the east right-of-way line of 95th Street to the dead end of the Lewis Drive right-of-way and abutting Lot 7, Block 7 of Manor Meadows and Lot 2, Block 0 of Brighton Gardens subdivisions. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing agenda item number 37 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 38, an ordinance levying a special tax and assessment on certain lots, parts of lots, and pieces of real estate in the city of Omaha to cover the cost of constructing sidewalks in district number SWR 2017-01, A's communication and opposition. Public hearing agenda item number 38 is today. Proponents, please. Robert Boyd, Public Works, here to answer questions. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 39, an ordinance approving a real estate purchase agreement with Michael Kirby to convey the property located at 3515 North 30th Street in the amount of $800. Public hearing agenda item number 39 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 40, an ordinance approving a real estate purchase agreement with Habitat for Humanity of Omaha, Inc. to convey the property located at 3609 North 19th Street in the amount of a dollar. Public hearing agenda item number 40 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 41, an ordinance levying a special assessment for fees and civil penalties on certain lots in the city of Omaha, group number 2018-01, A's communication and opposition. Public hearing agenda item number 41 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 42, an ordinance to approve an amendment to the Downtown Business Improvement District number 6874 to increase the special assessment cap for the district by allowing a 10% increase from $0.439 per thousand dollars of assessed value to $0.484 per thousand dollars for the 2018-2019 work year with an increase of 3% per year thereafter. Public hearing agenda item number 42 is today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon. Holly Barrett, 1403 Farnham Street, Unit 802. Uh, I am the executive director of the Omaha Downtown Improvement District. Thank you so much for hearing us today. I'm going to try to be brief to uh, get you out of here as soon as possible. We're here today on behalf of the Omaha Downtown Improvement District, the organization which focuses on improving our downtown public realm through cleanliness, increased security, beautification, activation, advocacy, all of these things which you all know. Um, we're here today to support our request for what we see as a very modest increase in the assessment that funds our organization. 
I think the most important statement that can be made right off the bat is that we've crafted this request over several years and with the input from every single constituent in our district that we could possibly reach. Uh, and our request is such that if you approve it, it will allow our organization to expand in a very small but extremely impactful way. Uh, namely, we intend to use the additional funds, which will total about 40000 to bring on one more full-time staff person for our Clean and Green team, which is our most important and currently most needed program. Uh, quick little history, we were the first improvement district to be created in Omaha 11 years ago, and we were essentially an experiment in urbanism. Uh, the experiment's proven itself a success, the proof being that my office receives requests for our services every single day. Uh, and uh, the fact that our downtown population is growing by leaps and bounds only says to us that the need for our services uh, is now being outstripped by our current ability to respond. Uh, when we were first chartered, we were set in place with an extremely low assessment rate and um, no um, accelerator built, built in. Thank you so much. Um, so what you're seeing right now, or you will in just a second, and you do have this in your packet, um, is a comparison of our assessment rate against the rates of some of our peer and aspirational cities. Oh, the important one is not even there. <laughs> um, the hope at that point was that the downtown development would be intense enough to lead to a rise in property values, which would allow us to grow organically. And this has happened to a certain extent, but it hasn't happened uh, to, to such a rate that, that that kind of growth mechanism would have really worked to allow us to keep up with the need for increasing services as our, as our density, as our population um, continues to grow. Um, in fact, in other areas of the city, uh, when they began to develop their own improvement districts, such as Elkhorn and Benson, um, they learned from our mistakes and they built their own accelerators into um, their ordinances. So what we're looking at now is a comparison of the Omaha BID assessments, including their accelerators. And you can see that while we are the, the largest and, and um, certainly um, most comprehensive improvement district in the city of Omaha, then we are um, uh, we are, are, are quote unquote unfunded and that we have no accelerator. Um, our clean and green team is out there 364 days a year. We only take Christmas off uh, to pick up curb line litter and maintain our beautification efforts. We have 75 blocks in our district and we have only two employees on the street. And uh, this means that uh, as our population intensifies, our litter intensifies, and our little team is madly struggling to stay on top of some of our most basic tasks. Uh, in addition, the needs of our community go far, far beyond our basic tasks, and we find ourselves every day responding to requests that should be within our workload, but that we often don't have either the staff or the equipment resources to accomplish. Um, a few examples of this would be everything from power washing our alleys uh, and some of our areas with major bird invasions, some tree trimming and replacements, and you know everything from the installation of dog waste removal stations to public art. You, we, we have our finger on, on a little bit of everything. Um, so to say that we're spread a little thin is, is a major understatement. So over the last three or four years, we have been identifying our community's needs and we really feel like we've come up with a plan that includes both an increase from our base constituency and the ability to seek some outside funding through our newly created foundation. In fact, we've already sought several smaller grants for equipment upgrades and we're just about to begin work on a new grant that would fund further security officers, which is one of the other main programs of our mission. We see this requested revenue increase as the first step towards the future of a more influential and effective organization as the whole. And uh, we are very pleased to say that we have unanimous support of some of our highest, of all of our highest valued properties, uh, a few of which are here today to show our support. And uh, those folks, their payments are absolutely the highest that we receive. We've also received the support of the majority of our smaller properties, our business tenants, and our residents. So the important stuff is right here. Uh, what you're seeing right now is the average impact that this will have on our assessed properties. And as you can see, at the end of five years, these are the numbers that are kind of the most important uh, at the end of, of the game that we're looking at. Uh, the average resident will see an increase of about $16, and a commercial property will see an increase of about $314. So we are not asking for the moon, but what we are asking for is going to make a huge impact uh, just on our small little team. And again, we have done this over several years, really reaching out to find out exactly what people want and what their giving threshold is. 
uh, we're confident that right now what we're presenting here is, uh, in addition to the work of our newly formed foundation, something that will really create an impactful change and will allow us to better serve the needs of our downtown neighborhood. I am joined by my board president, Dan Emanuel, and Arnold Reeves in the audience, who was our board treasurer. Uh, and then we have uh, First National Bank, which is one which is one of our top five properties. We also have our governing board, which is the Business Improvement District. Uh, we have that board president, Brian McGee, who is one of our large, or excuse me, one of our small, large businesses, um, owning the Upstream Brewery. Um, and uh, in addition to that, we've got a few other folks here. So I'm going to turn it over to Dan and let him uh, say a few words, and then we'll be here to ask some questions or answer questions. Thank you. Well, thank you, Holly. Uh, I'm Dan Emanuel, 416 South 14th Street. I'm a current chair of the board of the Downtown Improvement District. I only have a couple of comments to add. Uh, Holly talked about our Downtown Improvement District Foundation. Uh, the levy increase that we were asking for today will only fund about 10% of the need, the additional need that we see the good that the Downtown Improvement District can do for the downtown area. We will raise additional needed funding through a combination of organic increases in accessible values within our existing boundaries, boundary expansion, and the Omaha Downtown Improvement District Foundation. We hope the foundation will play an important role uh, in the effort, and we want to express that the foundation is open for business. That's the Omaha Downtown Improvement District Foundation, 1620 Dodge Street, number 140, Omaha, Nebraska, 68102. Finally, I want to also say that uh, one of the enabling initiatives of the downtown um, master plan is to increase the authority and scope of the DID. One of the ways it tells us to do this is by developing an expanded budget. So we feel we're doing what we're supposed to do. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? <laughs> Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Mr. Jerem. Yes, I want to uh, thank Holly and, and the, the cadre of downtown enthusiasts and supporters for coming today. And um, I think back to 2009, I had just been elected, and, and my predecessor offered to meet with me to kind of give me some, you know, lays of the land, so to speak, over an iced tea out at Wheatfields. Should have been downtown, but that's where he wanted to meet, and so that's where it's I had okay, to go I'll get the info. Um, <laughs> But one of the first things we had to do and deal with uh, was the renewal of, of, of your downtown BID so that the DID could keep going. And I was um, informed about how contentious the, the first setup of this original BID was. And the room was filled with people and um, divisions were deep. And the sunset clause was put in as a way to um, demonstrate to those who were skeptics that this organization had a limited time to prove its value to the downtown area. Well, I was braced for this big contentious hearing that was sure to come, that I was promised would fill the room, and it was about as many people as here today, and all but one, I think, were in support. And so I thought, well, not to steal anyone else's phrase of mission accomplished, but <laughs> you accomplished your mission that you had been charged with in terms of proving your value. And when you came to me a few years back about this idea and the needs, um, I was receptive because the number one service requests that I receive for downtown are in the areas that you are helping uh, fulfill and, and clean up the green team. And there are more requests than you can get to in a day. Mm -hmm. I asked you to survey your members, to come up with consensus, to get the support of your group. And if you could do all that, I think that you would probably um, find yourself where you are here today with no one coming down to <coughs> testify in opposition. And I have not had one person contact me in opposition to this. So you've learned from what you should have had in the first with an annual increase built in. Every other business improvement district has adopted that model. No one anywhere that I'm aware of, particularly the ones that are in my district, has complained about those built-in features 
for a, a modest increase annually um, your other means of trying to get more money in terms of your foundation and the valuation increases is is a good idea and I'm glad to see that you incorporated it um, and finally I would say that you were very very modest in terms of the ask of a budgetary increase of 40,000 since you first began I mean all, over a decade ago so um, put all that together and I think that explains why there's nobody here shouting and screaming um, in opposition or leading any charge against you so um, congratulations to you on the hard work I hope when this comes back that my colleagues will support it and um, if anyone has any questions about what's going on downtown there's a lot of good people in here that that have all the, the inside information so and if you have any need to see the proof of what the need for the work <coughs> is there's a folder that Mr. Emanuel is holding on to that has some photos in it that pretty uh, scary pretty pretty tough stuff to show what the need is um, but no need to put out there and, and give people a, a and a less than favorable impression of downtown, which is what we're trying to put Thank some mojo <laughs> back in downtown, and and you guys are doing a lot of hard work to do that. So thank you. Thank you. I I would like to follow up on one comment that Councilman Jerem just made. Um, we uh, we reached out individually to our top five uh, largest properties, which are by ordinance uh, given a seat on our board, and we give them a little bit of a special treatment simply because they're paying the most. So. Um, we reached out to them individually to make sure that they were going to be okay with this 10% increase and all five of them um, said why aren't you asking for 20% and we said wow we chose the 10% because we thought it was going to be something that that would be very palatable um, to, to those of us like me who are a resident down here and um, a $16 increase is a $16 increase so um, so thank you very much for your kind compliments. We hope that we have accomplished the tasks that have been put before us before, and we really hope that with this expansion that we're going to be able to take on a hell of a lot more um, as, as requested. Thank you. Mr. Festus. Thanks, Mr. President. I just would want to commend you as well. I was I remember those days of contention, contention well as also having been a uh, planning board member at the time, and I came to the planning board, of course, before I went to the city council, and uh, I was supportive of it then, and still supportive of it now and having gone through this a couple of times myself now in Dundee and Benson it is very difficult to get the consensus that you've achieved but it's best done by showing the results that you've achieved and uh, that gets people on board pretty quickly but it does take over communication and a lot of effort to get where you are today to have uh, a lot of consensus behind your approach here in an expansion so I wanted to commend you on that too and look forward to supporting this next week as well Thank you, thanks thank you mr. Hardy just real quickly, I, I had one person at, uh, in my other job um, who I work with actually lives in, in the downtown area, and, and he got the notice. He just asked me to look into it. I think when I called Bernard Indenbosch from the law department, he said it was the first and only question that of, I think I'm going to get the number wrong, of 1,500 notices that were sent out somewhere in that neighborhood only one so I, I commend you on on how well you got your uh, constituency to to go along with this thank you very much it was not easy <laughs> actually that's not true it was very easy <laughs> truly and I think that's the proof of, of that we're doing it <laughs> just a few years just a few years <laughs> thank you very much for coming down thank you Mr. appreciate President. it uh, next item Item 43, in ordinance to approve the Omaha Downtown Improvement District Association 2018-2019 Budget and Work Plan and the 2017 Omaha Downtown Improvement District Stakeholder Survey Results and levying a special tax and assessment on all lots and pieces of real estate within Business Improvement District number 6874 in the City of Omaha in the amount of $465,830.74. Public hearing agenda item number 43 is today. Proponents, please. I'm not going to go into too much depth here because I think you are already well aware of what we are doing. Um, I want to make sure that you know that the budget that we um, submitted includes that 10% that increase. Um, I'm going to, just for the sake of time, show you our overall budget. This is a simplified budget and we do have a more broken down one if you um, so desire. 
Um, but you'll see that even with this increase, we are still below 450000 and that all of the additional income is going to go into that management line, which is where we put all of our staff, even when our staff is 100% um, program driven. So we do have two staff members, myself and my communications director, and our time is spread over a couple of different programs, but we continue to list it all in management because that is the, um, the easiest way that our auditors uh, can get that information out to everyone. But all of the um, proposed 40,000 that will come in will go, will go straight into one full-time uh, clean and green team person. Um, so with that, I would hope that you would approve this year's budget and work plan. And if you have any further questions on the work plan, which is in your packet, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Are there any other proponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, are there any opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Item 44, an ordinance to amend Omaha Municipal Code, Chapter 10, Article 5, Division 5, entitled Small and Emerging Small Business Program to modify the program's definitions and certification criteria. Public hearing agenda item number 44 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Next item. Non-action items, items 45 through 56, do not require a public hearing or city council consideration at this meeting, but will be placed on a future agenda for public hearing and or vote. The reason for non-action is noted after the item on the agenda, as well as the date the item is expected to appear on the agenda for consideration. Motion adjourned. Second. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Harding. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed. Meeting is adjourned at 3.32 p.m.